these things, often um, uh, people talk about it in their own little silo. And what we believe is that there's this umbrella um, concept, which is the blue economy, where you say, I'm part of this much bigger blue economy. And if you saw those numbers, $1.5 trillion, that will get any politician's attention. And you say, I'm part of an industry that's three <laughs> times the size of the water wastewater industry. That'll get somebody's attention. When you start talking about aquaculture in the state of California, aquaculture is maybe, I don't know, $20 million. That's not to say it shouldn't be three, three billion. So um, we have the potential in Southern California Bite to be the biggest aquaculture in the world with tens of thousands of jobs, right? I mean, that's on, from fork to, foot, you know, to, to, to plate, basically. But um, you first have to convince people, and by doing, talking about blue economy and blue tech is a way to do that. You create these umbrella concepts. So as I said, politicians understand growth and jobs. In this case, algae and wind energy. You know, we're, we're talking to these people, and they're going, God, I never thought about that. But now you're telling a story. You know, when you meet a new, if you're a female and you meet a new man, you tell a story. And he tells you a story. And you can decide whether you like each other or not. And so at the end of the day, it's no different from a politician deciding whether or not they're going to support your industry for versus somebody else's industry. You're telling a story. And if you don't know how to tell your story, you're not going to be as successful. So uh, we were telling these people, please promote Blue Tech, be part of a unified Blue Voice. This is really important to us. You know, this, I think everybody talks about it, but to promote truly a circular economy. So what that means is that, that we in the United States import $15 billion of fish a year. It's one of the biggest imbalances of trade that we have. Over 90% of all the fish we eat, they didn't walk here for their health, so they were brought here with a carbon footprint, and there's somebody else who's raised them and, get, and is getting our money. We could easily, in this country, have that much or more. But the thing that, that all that does is say $15 billion, that's the meat. So what you really don't need to do and I'll show you in a second, is you need to figure out what's the real value of that fish. And it's far more than just the meat. So, and then big value creation in the supply chain and total use, these are, you know, the concepts, learning from abroad, because there's some incredible things going on in other countries. So that part you've already seen, that part you've seen. These are some of our members, uh, that part you've seen. Uh, this is just a little more extensive uh, related to the, the blue economy. The European Union just did its first ever, I told you the 2016 um, OECD study, this is the first ever study from the European Union, June of 2018. $566 billion dollar, uh, euros. And then on the right side it talked about algae alone. So I was just trying to give people a sense of how big these are. Um, this is a guy who has really spent all his time in biomarine, that's his big thing. And whether these numbers are right or not, I don't know. But you know, I, I highlight it's $168 billion market and growing. This is what he considers aquaculture biomarine. These are, again, big numbers. And so uh, I can tell you that even with the, the smallest numbers in the United States that NOAA has, which is a, just a percentage of the blue economy, it's far more than all the, the, the uh, grocery store workers in the United States, far more than all the telecom workers in the United States just in the traditional industries in, in, in the United States by itself. So this is really cool because he talks about how big this industry is. This now is a way of looking at all the pieces within biomarine, you know, marine renewables, uh, nutrition, cosmetics, healthcare, um, environment, clean tech, you got all the processing, you have biomass. There's all these pieces that make up this biomarine industry. This again, this is not one industry. These are multiple, multiple industries. So this is, uh, Iceland is really interesting. They're not a triple helix cluster, but we really like what they're doing. Um, in Norway, the same way. They are trying to use 100% of the fish, and Norway is the same way. And I'll explain that a little bit more. This is, um, from, Nor this is from, uh, from Iceland. And so what they're doing is they're not just taking the, and, and grinding up the rest of the fish. Because that's easy. You can take the skeleton and all that has protein in it. So you grind it up and you turn it into fish meal and you give it to another fish. But that's relatively low value add. So the real question is, 
what can you do with that fish? Instead of being a $14 or $15 fish, how do you make it a $50 or $60 fish? And this is his little machine, you know, <laughs> as, as it, here's the fish and at the end is zero weight. That's what we're trying to convince the fishermen. That's what we're trying to convince, you know, everybody we work with, whether it's seaweed, whether it's fish, whatever it is, we have to be asking for 100% usage. We're all responsible. No one of us is responsible. It's not just industry that's responsible. It's when you go to the, to the store, you know, asking, is this sustainably raised? It's, you know, asking questions, it's demanding that people are trying to use, in this case, 100% of whatever it is. So in the Iceland cluster, $12 a cod, but they think there's a potential for $3,500 of value from one cod. Hmm. Because you can take parts of, the, of the, the skin you can use, the braces, you know, women like to you know, do these things and get old, get dead skin off. We men don't do that. Um, or they have <laughs> collagen. We have collagen, you know, for example, $6 an ounce. And they've got, they've got pieces within the, the fish that can be used to create collagen uh, creams. You know, so you've got all this value that people, frankly, have not figured out how to take care of. I was there in December of 2015. There were about 60 companies. Today there's over 100 companies. They call it fish and, and ships, which I think is very, very <laughs> cute. <laughs> Um, this is biomimicry, um, just again, an example, bacterial living produce toxic flame retardant like compounds. And you think about that, this is a common marine sponge that has bacteria specialized in the production of toxic chemicals nearly identical to man-made fire retardants. Holy mackerel. So let's go out and, and create um, beds of these kind of marine sponges because they're probably going to clean up the, you know, the water while, while, while they're at it. There's all these advantages that we're just beginning to understand. This was 2017. They're just discovering these things. Aquaculture boom creates $13.3 billion in a water treatment market. Just a water treatment piece. So you, none of these are, are by themselves. You know, back to Sean's comment, you've got to talk to econo economists, you've got to talk to business people, you've got to talk to the scientists. At the end of the day, very few of us come up with all the answers by ourselves. I can tell you, my partner is the one who's all the genius. Um, I'm the one that's networking them. I'm the one that's finding the, 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 uh, the users. But they're the guys that have come up with the great ideas. So unless you're working in teams like that, you can't know. So I thought, you know, I, I get these articles and I think, God, look, think about that. So $7.2 billion water treatment and aquaculture expand rapidly as aquaculture rises. So these, that's another industry, if you will, that's coming. This is one of our member companies called Aquaneering. And they <laughs> created, in fact, this process flow. I can't, I'll have to read this, but <laughs> fluidized bed biofilter system to come and read. So they've been using this, and like uh, zebrafish, which you can use instead of humans or monkeys to test medicines on. It turns out they have their nervous system or something is like ours. You know, who would have thought? And so all around the world, people buy this for them. They're the only provider in the world of this kind of equipment. Every year they give one of these to an educational institution. So we got to know them because they also make the tanks that when you do the, the feed stock, um, the, the root stock, and then you take it somewhere else to grow it out for aquaculture. Uh, and they make the, the best tanks, in, certainly in the United States at this point. Again, I'm just giving you some ideas of some of our companies now. This is a company that licenses technology from the U.S. Navy. If you've we ever have one of those now because yeah. because of I met those guys down. Yeah, really? Yeah. So we have one now in our lab. Well, I think it's really cool. So this was based because we're finding more and more um, organisms in the ocean that bioluminesce. And in the last year or two, I've seen some amazing uh, things on YouTube and Science Channel where you'll, they're, they're finding, uh, they had no idea that, the, that there was so much bioluminescence down the, uh, down the ocean. And so in this case, he's using bioluminescent marine organisms. You go down to the beach and you see the waves crushing in, sometimes it'll be blue-green kind of thing. That's the bioluminescence. Those are organisms that are going, hey, what the hell's going on? Why am I being thrown around? So he, they harnessed this, the US Navy harnessed it, and said, we want to find divers, we want to find bad guys. And so he took it and is using it now to find water impurities. Um, this is a, one of our member companies down in Ensenada, Mexico. Um, they first commercial striped bass hatchery in the world. And they're trying now to increasingly figure out 
what else to do with it. So if you wanted to, you could put it in here like Biomarine. They were bubbling off some protein and it turned out they could use that probably for collagen after we start talking to them. Um, this is a, a Norwegian-based company. They're using krill harvesting to improving human and planetary health. Uh, they're coming to our event in November. Um, so they're, they're culturing krill? No, they're oh, okay. finding krill, uh, they're capturing okay. krill. Uh, but they're doing it in a sustainable way. Okay. They've been given a lot of awards for the way they do it. So this is kind of the what we think is that we, this was my joke before about which of you have rich cousins <laughs> and parents, but um, we need success stories, but we also need a lot more uh, smart money. Angel investors, corporate investors, institutional funding. Um, we, this is really critically important. I already told you that first ever Blue Invest Day, the European Union in Brussels, this is a, a group in, in, in Lisbon that we're working with. They just put together kind of an accelerator, and of course we're doing our third annual Blue Tech Investor Day. Yesterday there was, a, there was an event in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts um, that was gonna be on investment in the blue economy. So, we're done with that one. Any questions on the Maritime Alliance? Because now I'm gonna show you our company. I thought you'd get a kick out of seeing a company that, that we